I want to carry out a standardization reaction of sodium hydroxide using HCl and this is my HCl that I have prepared it is 0 0.1 molar and the sodium hydroxide that I need to standardize is here my aim is to get the concentration of this sodium hydroxide so I'll have to have Standardize the HCl since it's a secondary standard. You can't just use it directly. You need to react or to titrate with the standard primary standard so that you know its exact concentration. So I have done that using sodium carbonate and I've come up with the true concentration for HCl. Now I'll use my HCl to get the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So before that, I need to get my billets. I have to rinse it with uh, some distilled water so that I ensure that it is clean. After that, I empty the content. I've rinsed it with this water, expose it. Now I'll have to rinse it with my, now my HCl, small amount of it. After I have rinsed it with the, the solution now, I want to fill it with, I'm now ready to fill my pirate with the HCL. Take a small amount of it in a picker. Fill my bread. Make sure that the tap is not open. You fill it past zero mark. After that, wipe the spill. And then remove the funnel. Then after you have removed the funnel, you turn, you make sure that it is at zero mark. There. Now I have to pipette my sodium hydroxide. This is my sodium hydroxide, which I'm intending to know its concentration using the concentration of the HCl. Now I just fill with the sodium hydroxide. And now I pipette 25 mils using a 25 mil pipette and a pipette filler. So I'll have to pipette 25 mils.
make sure that it is surpasses the mark then now you use you return it back to the mark there i have pipetted my 25 mils of sodium hydroxide i transfer it to a conical flask I add my phenolphthalein indicator here, two drops. There we are. Phenolphthalein indicator in a, in a base has a pink color. And when I'm doing the titration, I'll uh, titrate until I reach that point whereby there is I'm reaching towards equivalent. I'm having equal amount of the acid nearing to equal amount of the base that I'm using. I'll have the color start disappearing and now from there I'll have to add drop by drop so that I, I know the exact end point. So after I've added my indicator in the sodium hydroxide that I've pipetted and now start the titration so with the first titration i don't know where it will change so i'll just it is a kind of approximation i'll just titrate I'll continue titrating and if the color changes to colorless. So with the first one, I have had my endpoint. That's when the solution turns to colorless. It shows I've reached my endpoint there and I have to take the pipette reading and my endpoint is at 19. So I record that. I started at 00, zero. the endpoint has reached at 19.00, now my Tata value is 19.00. So, since the volume is still, the, the pipette holds a maximum of 50 and I have only used 19, I can still continue from where I have left or I can opt to refill back my uh, Red to zero, but now for this case, since the volume is still within the range, I'll just continue from there. Now, my second initial volume will be my first the volume that I have reached for the, with the first iteration, which is 19.00. So, I do the I pipette another 25 of the sodium hydroxide. transfer it to the conical flask. I pipetted my second 25 mils of the sodium hydroxide. Then I add the same mils of the indicator that I added. That's phenolphthalein. The first titration I added two, two drops. And with the second titration I also add two drops of the indicator so that I can have uniform results. So after that, I start my titration. And since my first title value was at 19, and I was not that exact, I'll make a continuous titration. Let's say, for example, I'll run the, the acid 
for around 15 mils and then from there I'll now add drop by drop so that I can get the exact end point. So from 19, if you add that 19, you add 15 units there, you'll have around 30, 34. So I'll run my burette up to around 33 continuously because I have now approximated the end point weight is so so I've run 15 minutes continuously which has saved me time so from there I can now add drop by drop to get the exact end point or the, the exact point where my end point has reached. So I'll add drop by drop as I swallow my solution. So there I have my exact end point and it is at 37.1. So my second data value is at 37.2. If you minus that, you'll get 2. So it is, I have my second tighter volume. Now the volume has, it's almost toward the end. I'll now be forced to fill the direct fresh. Now we fill my direct back to zero. Remove the funnel and get the mark back to zero. After that, wash my corner of glass. Now I want to do the last titration. I now pipette my sodium hydroxide. Twenty five mils of it. my 
five minutes of the sodium nitroxide transfer it to the conical flask now I'm going to do my last filtration here I am I add my phenolphthalein indicator still two, uh, two drops of, of it here I am similar to the second rotation that the way I have done it and run around 18 mils continuously before I start adding drop by drop because now I have determined where my end point is so I won't waste a lot of time adding drop by drop I just add continuously until I have added almost towards the end point from there I start adding drop by drop until I have my end point so there I am I've added up to 18 then now from there I can add drop by drop until the pink color just disappears there I am now the end point as 8 and set it as 0, 0 at 19.0 so, so I have done now with the titration I have my title values which are the first value is 19 19.1 19.0 so you find that the values are within they, are, they coincide to one another now to get the exact the exact volume or the average volume that I have used in my titration I'll have to average the three uh, tighter value because they are within where they can be averaged I'll add the three uh, 19.00 plus 19.1 plus 19.00 divided by 3 so this will be my theta value will be 19.03 which is approximately 19.00 big centimeter so this is the volume of the acid that has reacted with the sodium hydroxide and since the HCl is of non concentration now I can use this theta volume to get the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Why sodium hydroxide and HCl react in the ratio of one to one? Then it means the moles of sodium hydroxide, the moles of HCl used is the same as moles of sodium hydroxide used. And since I have standardized my HCl, which is now 0.1 molar, having the tighter value, moles of sodium hydroxide will be exactly moles of sodium uh, HCl and the moles of HCl will be this tighter value that I have obtained multiplied by the molarity of the acid divided by the volume of the solution which is 1000 so if you multiply 19 times 0 0.1 divided by 1000 that's the moles of HCl and the same moles of sodium hydroxide used having obtained the moles of sodium hydroxide in the volume that you was used i used 25 mils of the sodium hydroxide so since i have the moles of hcl which is the same as the moles of sodium hydroxide and those moles of sodium hydroxide are in 25 i can now simply calculate the morality of the sodium hydroxide by having this expression if the moles that are obtained in the, uh, the for the acid the same as moles of the sodium hydroxide and the moles of sodium hydroxide are in the volume that I used which is 25 are about 1000 from there I'll now have obtained the morality of sodium hydroxide and the aim of the practical will be achieved because I have been able now to get the morality of sodium hydroxide thank you